I first saw Lynn at a Conscious Company media event. In the last two years, SOCAP was sold to new ownership, and the benefit of this new ownership is that now we now have multiple brands that are operating at this intersection of money and meaning, reaching new audiences, and circling back to that first theme I opened with, that this has to be a bigger conversation with more people. And so I'm so excited for our last presenter here today. She's gonna send us off to the food truck party, Kate Byrne, president of Intentional Media. And I just wanted to take two seconds before I start to say, can we please thank Lindsay Smalling for this amazing, amazing experience we're all having. So everyone's had a great week, learning a lot, meeting a lot of great people, because that's really kind of the point. Well, good. So I'm gonna put my glasses on, because it's that kind of day. I'm not throwing away my shot. I'm reminded of a line heard through the musical Hamilton as we've listened to the speakers over the last few days and staring at the opportunity we have standing before us. We created Intentional as our shot at gathering the many fragmented voices that were disparate, doing their part to drive change. In speaking with the market, we discovered a huge gap that needed to be filled, and so we did. We became the proud owners of SoCap and its two sister brands, Total Impact, which works with traditional financial practitioners and helping mainstream impact investing. And then we've got Conscious Company, which helps support, empower, and educate, and then celebrate uh, next generation leaders and social entrepreneurs who are creating new business models so that all may thrive. We look at the world through what we call the intentionality funnel. On the one end, you have SOCAP and you have what we call the curated. That's everybody in this room, probably many of the people who are listening in, and those are the people that are already doing the work, right? They are consuming, they're acting, they're running their business very, very consciously, intentionally. SOCAP run, speaks to that group, as does Conscious Company in terms of leadership. In the middle, we've got the curious. These are the folks who have already started to dabble a little bit, and they've liked what they've seen, but they're trying to figure out, gosh, how can I do more? This is Conscious Company, and this is total impact. And then on the far end of the spectrum, we've got the agnostic. Now those people are not necessarily naysayers, they're just kind of sitting there a little bit on the fence saying, hmm, is there really, really a there there? And it's our job every day to make sure that we move more and more of those people up into the intentionality funnel. And the way we do it is by meeting where they're at. And by that, I mean either providing experiential opportunities, such as the one that we're all enjoying, podcasts, digital, or micro learning um, opportunities through newsletters. And many share what is going on in the market, so they've got a bit more of a, I'd say, an arm's length view. But not many people really talk about how to get involved, how to do it. And what I always say is, We've been doing a whole lot of blah, 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 but there's not a lot of da, da, da. And so our hope is that we're gonna give a lot of more people da, da, da. And the way we do this is by leveraging the power of story and human connection. The wisdom of crowd is phenomenal. And as you can see, and you all, present company included, we're a pretty phenomenal crowd. We wanna make sure that we spread as many of your pearls as possible so that any and everyone who wants to become in this movement become a part of this movement can be, because Lord knows there's a lot of change that needs to be done. So over the next few minutes, what I'd like to do is actually share with you some of what we've been learning from our conversations out in the marketplace in hopes that it'll inspire you and give an aha moment or two as to how you can participate more. But to start, I wanted to kind of take a step back and talk a little bit about the oversimplified equation of business. Historically, it's been, you know, planet, as in resources, plus people, jobs, consumers, your customers, becomes profit, jobs, and community contribution. Well, two things to note. First, an economy is a thriving, dynamic organism. And it is very dependent and reflective of the sum of the parts that make up the whole. Second is that we humans make up a large part of that system, which means that we've got our hearts and our hands and our minds all over its functionality. We have lots of opportunity, and we take advantage of it so very often to muck it up. 
So as long as humans are in the mix, we need to really have checks and balances to ensure the desired behavior is practiced. And measurement is imperative, as is agreed upon definitions of what is good, bad, and ugly. Because greed, while we would like to think we won't succumb to it, it is an extraordinarily and very easy human foible. And many of us really probably are already, even today, in terms of how we're running our business, how we are consuming, and how are we are acting with one another. So that's the beauty of an event like SOCAP 2019, because it gets all of us under one tent and under one room, and we can learn from each other. And what I find most exciting is, it's so easy to celebrate successes. Woo woo, hands to the roof. It's a lot harder to actually share, wow, was this ever a misstep? But those missteps, that's extraordinary learning. And the more we get used to coming clean and sort of sharing those with others, I think we'll be able to really move much farther forward. We've created an incredibly vicious cycle, one where there's a lot of finger pointing and hand waving and very big in-person reveals of how there's been less dastardly purposeful behavior. But as a wise old woman once said to me, every time I, Katie, you have a finger pointing at, out at someone else, you've got three pointing back at you. And that's right. Because you know what, we all play a role. And shareholders, whether we're aware of it or not, and our demands for higher and faster returns, well, we've inadvertently given company leaders, many of them are young, very ambitious, not always experienced, and quite frankly, they're looking as uh, serial entrepreneurship as a career path. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but it does have a di very different drive. And what we've done is we've given them the excuse to make very expedient decisions, one where profit is achieved at all costs. The shareholder made me do it. That's a true line that actually somebody said to me. And when you think about it, it's really easy to see how it happens. And to me, the situation is very reminiscent of the dot-com phase. How so? In those days, innovation was the name of the game. That sounds familiar, right? Forget having a business plan that was actually based on actual math. Ideas were enough. Slap a dot com to any word of choice, be it Gazoontite to Sock Puppet, both of which were real companies at one time, which is really embarrassing. And bam, you were golden until that little darn nasty reality was uncovered. It really turns out you really did have to have a true business with a recurring revenue stream. Wah, wah. That actually is a thing. So to me, purpose, is not, purpose alone is not enough, and nor a shareholder return at the risk of the planet. We've entered a time of both and rather than either or. And thankfully, today's workforce is keeping us accountable. They're choosing with their feet and wallet. Their feet are demonstrating where they're choosing to work. Their wallet is where they're choosing to consume. And it's one of the reasons why companies and the next generation leadership are so getting loftier in their purpose and their vision and their mission statements. They really do believe what they see in their minds and they believe what they feel in their hearts. And what they want to make sure is they want to alert the future talent and workforce that, hey, come work beside me. Help me change the world. And to that, we applaud and say kudos. However, we also know that that alone is not enough. And what leaders don't seem to be getting is the need to be doing more than just talking about purpose. They need to do, actually do the hard work of it. And that, that too is a real thing. That's hard, it's a slog, it takes true intentionality. They need to build inclusive and diverse workforces and thereby fueling the greatest innovations because you're gonna have the greatest ideas. You're gonna have more minds helping to solve problems. Not only that, it's gonna to lead to much better success because your companies and your products are actually gonna be designed and created and produced by people that model the very people you wanna take care of, your customer. It's another form of the we get you phenomenon, only this time it's the, it's the customer that you're getting. And actually, not only is it the right and human thing to do, but the numbers are in, the math is great, and hello, it's a really smart business practice. In fact, those companies that have greater diversity, be it in their board or in their leadership, well, they, they deliver 32% higher ROI to their shareholders. They actually enjoy 45 to 65% greater employee retention, depending on which study you're looking at. Lastly, they have happier employees by 89%. Leaders really need to think about how many zeros they really need in a paycheck and seriously demonstrate walking the talk by 
walking a portion of their pay back into the community surrounding their corporate offices and into the family homes of their workforce. And all of this best practice can be kept on track by active shareholder voice, be it in executive compensation, sustainability, employee benefit, and equity practices. So doing so may mean slower and lower short-term returns. The good news is we're all going to be alive at least so we can enjoy them. Imperative is that everyone recognizes that we each play a role in doing this. Our intentional mantra is transforming moments to movements and thoughts to action. And so to do this, we rely greatly upon collaboration. It's the only way we'll get it done. And rather than being arrogant and dropping into new places and saying, hey, oh my gosh, let's build a barn, let's do something new. What we really want to do is actually go inside a market, find out who else is doing things, figure out where we can fill that hole, and then amplify the work that you're doing. So some of the work that we're working on right now and we're really excited about is a project like the Impact Investing Landscape that we're doing together with Opportunity Collaboration and Gratitude Railroad and Silicon Valley Circle. We're building out the marketplace and taking the SOCAP conversation regionally and locally through our SOCAP 365 events and working with Impact Philly at our Total Impact Philly event and getting the next generation of impacting minds up and running through our Total Impact Portfolio Challenge that we're doing together with Wharton and Bank of America and building new efforts to open the door to new audiences. We're particularly proud of the work we've done with Kellogg and how it resulted in the program spectrum coming up in June next year in Atlanta. And that is um, really targeted at getting more funders of founders, excuse me, getting more funding to founders of color. Finally, working with, together with the Sorensen Impact Center and helping amplify the fantastic work they're doing with Opportunity Zones, working with One World Training, Just Capital, the Gitterman Group, getting the overall global conversation going through working with GSG and New Ventures. And finally, one group that's woefully absent in this whole conversation are the corporates, and we're working with a group called Handshake. And then lastly, we're being very good convener partners by getting more involved with the conveners group because we realize the way that we can actually improve our own events is by working and learning through the work of others. So it's why we're so thankful to all our partners and sponsors who make SOCAP 19 and frankly intentional media possible to our team, our investors, and most important to the recipe of success is all of you. Because we know that you have a choice of where you can spend your time, and we're really grateful and thankful that you spend it with us. But one thing we want to do is we want to be sure that we're democratizing the space. And to that end, we want to build this for you, but together with you. So I really urge you, if there are suggestions that you have, please send a note. You can email me, kbyrne, B-Y-R-N-E, at intentional.co. And please let us know, because the truth is, we don't know what we don't know, and we're relying on you to fix that. We have an enormous opportunity right now to build a lasting legacy together. It's going to take each of us intentionally stepping up, opening our minds, rolling up our sleeves, and get to work and not shying away our shot. I don't know about you, but I'm not throwing away my shot. So join me. Thank you. Food trucks next. <laughs>